1993 interstate rivalry between the University of Iowa Hawkeyes and the Iowa State Cyclones, live from Ames, Iowa. Today's game is brought to you by Sprint Cellular. And by these GM Parts Mr. Goodwrench dealers. Try us for a change. And now, today's game. Sold out Cyclone Stadium in Ames. It's the Iowa Hawkeyes versus the Iowa State Cyclones. And you have the best seat in the house for the 41st meeting of the Cyhawk series. We'll be right back in just a moment. Pressed to find a better atmosphere for a Saturday, Saturday afternoon football game anywhere. We've got Hawkeyes and Cyclones. And what has become an electric atmosphere here, sold out crowd. The mission is simple for each coach today. Jim Walden wants to end the streak. Hayden Fry wants to extend it. Here are their thoughts on the big game. It, it, this is big, there's no question about that. And it'll be exciting and it'll be enthusiastic and everybody's, the bands are gonna play louder and I think there's a little step in everybody. Everybody's competing today. The fans compete to be a little brighter dressed and wilder looking. The bands compete because they want to look good. It, that's just the nature of the game. Today's ball game will be everybody out there is going to be trying to do something better than the other team. Our band's better than your band. Our fans better than your fans. Our mascot's better than your mascot. And hopefully our team's better than their team, uh, regardless of what side you're on. In our case, since it's Cyclones, I hope all those are won by the Cyclones today. Oh, there's no question we're on the road. We, uh, we only get approximately 4,000 tickets for our fans. The rest of them go to Cyclone fans. and. Uh, obviously, by the crowd noise, a lot of Hawkeye fans find their way in the stadium some way. Well, the coaches are ready. Let's go to the Iowa sideline where John Campbell is standing by. John, are the Hawks loose? Uh, the Hawks are loose, I can guarantee you that. They're also healthy, which may be more important. They had no injuries last week. Uh, I counted some bodies down here. Looked like everybody on hand during the pregame drills. Once again, the wind going to be an important factor. I asked Hayden Fry here on the sidelines, if they win the toss, will they defer so they can cho choose the win in the second half? He said he does not know. He said, John, this is going to be a real chess match down here uh, because of the wind. So the, uh, the, the uh, coin toss, which is usually just kind of a ceremony, could be a real strategy point here in this ballgame. Keith? Well, now to the Iowa State side where Rod Bodholt is joining us. And, Rod, what have you heard on these uh, secret uniforms that the Cyclones may be wearing? And Keith, I've heard the same thing that you have heard, that we could be seeing it. We know Notre Dame has tried this stuff as well as the Kansas basketball team. We'll have to see if Iowa State tries it to look for a little of good luck. One final note, they say these rivalries are always biggest for the team that's been doing the losing. And, of course, that's Iowa State for the past 10 years. We'll see if they can break the streak. I know they are ready and they would like to get it over with. All right, thank you, Rod. I think we're all ready. We're going to have the coin toss when we come back to Cyclone Stadium. You don't want to go away now. Cyclones have new uniforms on for this big game. They're decked out in all red. Boy, it's hard to miss them in those uniforms, isn't it, Arlen? Well, you can see them standing out a long way. It's a nice, pleasant change, though. I like the colors, all, all one color. Well, it received quite an ovation from the fans here when they first spotted them coming out of the locker room in the uniforms. Now we have the coin toss taking place at midfield. The Iowa Tri-Captains, you see Larry Blue and Mike Wells and Paul Burmeister for Iowa State. At number 67, Todd Miller, Chris Ulrich. This is a crucial moment here, winning the coin, uh, the uh, coin toss. Also out there, Doug Scartweet, the 305-pound senior. Iowa has won the toss. Let's see which way Hayden Fry decides to go. The Cyclones will receive. The Hawkeyes defer the toss. So we've seen our first bit of crucial strategy. Arlen, does that surprise you? No, not really. I think it's uh, imperative to anybody to come out. When the wind is blowing this strong, if you want to get a quick score, it might be a field goal. And so with the wind blowing the way it is, you take the wind and uh, give the other team the chance to get the ball and try to push it against it. Well, it could be good for Hayden Fry's young punters, too. He's got two freshman punters and a sophomore field goal kicker. So the 
Coach opts for the strategy of having the wind behind him, and probably not a bad idea. It is really blowing here, and there's the Iowa Swarm. Of course, a tradition with the Hawkeyes all leaving together or entering the field on in one big swarm, headed to the sideline. They call that their controlled exuberance. <laughs> controlled exuberance. I like that. It's a beautiful day at Cyclone Stadium, a sold-out crowd of about 55,000 people. And it's just a perfect day. The wind is going to be a story, but you couldn't ask for better temperatures or a prettier day, and we're ready for football. I think we've been ready for about two hours. I think some people have been ready for about uh, 10 years. Seems like it's sitting up through the pregame for the last 90 minutes. It seems like a long time. But, Keith, I'll tell you, one thing you will watch with uh, Iowa having the win some booming punts probably and maybe some long field goals it should be fun there's jim walden he is of course 0 and 6 against the hawkeyes and 0 and 14 against the big 10 so walden would like to get both wins in the same day big 10 and iowa and he's breaking out all the stops pulling out all the stops there the cyclone team decked out in all red It's a big game for the officials, too, and we have a Big Ten crew today. Last year when the game was in Iowa City, you have a Big Eight crew over there, so a nice balance to the game, and we're about ready for the kickoff. Just an electric atmosphere. This, uh, the, just look around the stadium, too. It's really, really beautiful to see it filled to capacity and then some, Keith. Uh, all of the fans are excited. You know the players are, and hopefully you at home are. Well, Todd Romano will kick it off for the Hawkeyes. He was four for four in field goals last week against Tulsa. That ties a Hawkeye record. Interestingly, though, he did miss a PAT. Four for four in field goals, missed a point after touchdown. James Brooks is a burner. He's got speed and two touchdowns to his credit already this year. Two long scores from his roommate, Bob Utter, last week. So John Fabris coaches the special teams at Iowa State, and they usually are very, very good at this facet of the ball game. Well, if you feel like it, get up off the chair there at home. It's an exciting atmosphere, and there's a little bit of evidence about the wind right there. Yeah, if you thought at home that we were kidding you uh, how strong it's blowing, it knocked it off the tee, and we might see problems like that uh, as the day goes on. You may even see uh, somebody having to hold the ball in place for him to kick it. All right, well, Romano's ready to go, and so are we. The 41st meeting of the Iowa-Iowa State game. And that ball had a better shot at going through the uprights than having Brooks return it. Not a real surprise with this kind of a win. Uh, you know, like you say, it's hard. You, you don't want to continue to harp on that, but it will be a factor. There's the Big 8's Offensive Player of the Week, Bob Utter. He had a career day against Northern Illinois. Three touchdowns passing, rushed 10 times for 70 yards, including a 50-yard score where he showed surprising speed. He really turned it on and made a great cut. We're ready to go. The triple option, 54 points, it's last time out. Ulrich up the middle, no utter, keeps it and pitches. Calvin Branch. 12-yard game. Matt Hilliard on the stop for the Hawkeyes. Taking a look at the offensive line anchored by the 305-pound senior Doug Scartweet from Radcliffe. The Iowa State backs and receivers, Brooks and Horacek are the receivers. Uh, Utter, the quarterback, not Branch and Ulrich in the wishbone. That was Branch that time with a nice pickup of 13 yards. So first and 10 for the clones. Utter keeps it, picks up a couple of yards. Stop that time by Mike Daly as we take a look at the defensive line for the Hawkeyes. Blue, the All-American candidate uh, Mike Wells, also Webb, Crane, and Hartley, who led the team in tackles last week. The defensive backs and linebackers led by the strong safety Jason Olenzak, who led the team in tackles last year. 
He was a all Big Ten honorable mention choice last season. He's up about a second and eight for the Cyclones. Inside to Ulrich, he has some room. And it's another Cyclone first down. Olin Zach on the stop. You'll see Utter takes the ball and he dumps it right to the fullback. That's the first option of that triple option. Not true, a nice play. They've got to, Iowa must stop the fullback. If they don't, he will gain big yards all day. Well, it's a first and 10 on the 44. Jim Walden has preached patience with this offense, but so far the Cyclones come out and pick up a couple of first downs. And off to Ulrich, who has a couple more yards. It looks like Hilliard, first man for the Hawkeyes. Looked like there was a hole there for a minute, but it closed in a hurry. In this particular case, he, he's going to start sprinting out like it's going to be a pass, trying to keep the linebackers in place, hands off on a, on a little bit of a draw, but the defense collapses in. Hilliard makes a beautiful stop on him for very little yardage. Well, the Iowa defense only gave up 32 yards rushing versus Tulsa. They've already given up 21 or 26 to the Cyclones so far today. So Iowa State has been moving the ball so far. Inside to the groundhog, Ulrich. Again, he's gang tackled Marie Crane in on the stop. Arlen, it'll be interesting to see. Walden says you have to sucker the defense with this offense. Get them thinking off tackle, off tackle, off tackle, and then pop the big play. Be interesting to see how long they wait until they throw that first pass because, of course, the passing game so successful last week against Northern Illinois. One guarantee. If they keep the move, moving the ball on the ground, they won't pass, especially against the wind, or at least not significantly. It'll be a tough going by throwing a pass in this wind. Third down and seven, big play for the Cyclones. Utter keeps it, finds a little room. It looks like he'll be just short of the first down. Mike Wells helping bring Utter down. Wells, the All-America candidate. That was the second option of the triple option. The first, of course, is the handoff to the fullback in the center. The second one is when the quarterback begins to string the uh, the line out. And then the third, of course, would be the pitch to the running back. Well, fourth down and two, and Jim Walden elects to punt. Coming in to punt now, Greg Rogala. He is a freshman, did a good job in his first game. Willie Guy. The much-anticipated, highly-awaited player for Iowa will not get a chance as Regala has trouble with the win. Not much distance on that punt at all. Paul Burmeister, the senior quarterback from Iowa City, about 16 yards on that punt for Rogala. He'll want to do better than that, but it's got to be awfully tough going into the win. Yeah, I, I think, Keith, that part of the problem there is the is the wind. I'm not sure he got a good foot on that ball. Uh, he might have been not rushed from the standpoint of the defense, but he rushed his, his actual kick. Didn't get a good hit on it, plus the wind, and the result is 16 yards. That's not good for the Iowa State Cyclones. And the wind's got to get in your head, too. It's got to become a little mental when you look up there and see the flags blowing as much as they are. First and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Their first possession of the game, Burmeister hands off to Cliff King, and he'll get a couple yards. Jeff Cole led the team in tackles last week. He's the first Cyclone there. Let's look at the offensive line for Iowa. All new players this year or first-time starters. Casey Wiegman, the center, kind of anchors that line. Backs and receivers, Jasper Slutsker with a big catch last week. Burmeister, Dean, Terry, and King, who just carried for about three yards. Second and seven coming up for the Hawkeyes. Burmeister from Iowa City grew up Rooting for the Hawkeyes, dreaming of being a Hawkeyes. Hawkeye. Chuck Long was his hero. Now here he is wearing Long's number and quarterback. And Terry tries the outside. Nothing there. That play fooled nobody. Kevin Fulton leads the Cyclone attack. Let's look at the defensive line for Iowa State. 
Got Scott Putz, Napaschik, and Todd Miller. Putz starting in place of Troy Peterson. He is expected to see action, though. And checking the backfield, Mitchie Cole, Alan Lazard, Harding, Fulton, and Linwood. Jeff Cole was replacing Malcolm Goodwin this year and had a terrific first game against Northern Illinois. It's third and 12. And we have an interruption of some kind, the referee. Timeout for Iowa. Timeout. Well, we're going to take a timeout, too. We'll be right back with third and 12 for the Hawks right after this. Remember, near the end of the game, Arlen and I will be selecting the pioneer player of the game. It's third down and 12, Iowa. Call timeout. Did they see something in the defense that uh, uh, Burmeister did not like? Yeah, it's, it's critical, I think, for Iowa at this point to keep a drive alive uh, and not let Iowa State get any momentum. So he may have seen something, per perhaps. You know, it's third and 12. He wants it, good chances to pass. He may have seen a different type of coverage than he liked. So rather than make a mental error, and again, he's somewhat of a young, inexperienced quarterback. He's going to call a timeout more frequently than an, an old, experienced quarterback. Well, one thing working in Iowa State's favor so far in this game, they're doing exactly what they wanted to do. The Cyclones have been jumped quickly by the Hawkeyes the past couple of years. In fact, it was 14-0 at the end of the first period a year ago. So far, the Clones have come out with a strong effort, which is exactly what Jim Walden wanted to do. Defensively, they, they've looked good in this first series. They're swarming to the ball. There's a lot of quickness. And now, finally, the play. Nobody in the backfield for Iowa. Burmeister, Todd Miller chasing him. He finds Cedric Shaw. This guy has speed. Tackled by Linwood and Wailing Harding. Big play for the Hawks. Nice poise that time by Burmeister finding Shaw while being chased by Miller. They made no secret about a pass. You can see nobody in the backfield. That's a good indication he's gonna throw. He lets them come on him. The, the blockers release, gives it to their fast man. Guy can really blaze, and then he just picks his way through the Iowa State defense. Uh, I'll tell you, for Iowa State's perspective, they let Guy get in the open, and they will have trouble all afternoon. You're right there. Cedric Shaw that time, he is just the fastest Hawkeye. And hey, uh, Hayden Fry says the fastest Hawkeye he's ever coached. And off inside, Terry he gets about seven or eight more. Jeff Cole on the stop for the Cyclones. So Iowa finds a couple of plays that work. Second and three coming up. Terry with that big touchdown against Tulsa. Fourth and two. Didn't look like he was going to get in. He gave a little hesitation and beat three guys to the pylon for the score. And, of course, Iowa followed that up with a two-point conversion for a thrilling come-from-behind win against the Golden Hurricanes. Second and two. And off Terry. Spins off a tackler. He's inside the 40. Jeff Cole and Cedric Linwood bringing him down. The Iowa running backs are doing a pretty good job so far early in the game in breaking tackles. If you can do this, knock off one, knock off two, and it takes two and three, four defenders to get you down, you're going to make some substantial yardage. And they're doing a great job. You can tell there's determination in their running. Iowa had touchdowns on two of its first three possessions last year, and the Hawkeyes are driving now, but Jeff Cole again on the stop. This guy's a gamer. He will have, of course, in the, in the defense that Iowa State runs, that four-man front line with the middle linebacker, the middle linebacker will make 60, 70 percent of your tackles. And he will be, uh, you know, he'll be a tired guy by the end of the day, I'm sure. Oh, he's had a workout so far. Second nine, as Paul Burmeister looks over the Cyclone defense. 
Pass play. Plenty of time. Gets it out to Terry. He's got some room out there. Waylon Harding on the stop. Not much of a pass rush that time for Iowa State. No, not, none at all. It was non-existent. If you give the quarterback three seconds or more, he's going to make a completion. And you can see, count them off, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. He's got plenty of time. He's looking at his second and finally a third receiver to get somebody open. So uh, good poise on his part. I think he did a great job. Iowa State electing to go with just a three-man rush that time, and they paid the price. Third down and one. This is a big play in the first quarter. Cedric Shaw takes it. We're going to have a close call there. Tackled by a host of Cyclones. Jeff Cole, one of them. You'll see an, an isolation on Cole, the middle linebacker, just like I, I told you a minute ago, he'll make a lot of the plays. He steps right up, makes the play for little gain. They're measuring right now to determine how much if he made the first down. Oh, it looks like he probably did. Well, no. <laughs> Wrong from up here. Got a couple of inches to go. Fourth and inches for the Hawkeyes. What will Hayden Fry do? Elect the field goal in the win. Romano was having no problems in the warm-ups, or will he go for it? Well, my money, my money says, if I were coaching, I'm going for it. They're moving the ball pretty well on the ground. Uh, they're starting to push Iowa State around in the front line a little bit. Iowa State's got the wind to go against, Keith. I'm going to say, let's go for it. Well, you get to hang on to your money there, Arlen, because they are going to go for it, fourth and inches. First quarter, no score, first possession for the Hawkeyes. Nobody in the backfield for Iowa. Maybe they're trying to draw them off sides. No, quarterback sneak, first down. What happens on a play like that, Keith, when they move the folks out of the backfield, that forces linebackers and defensive backs to also move out for coverage purposes. That leaves a little bit of a hole in the middle and custom made for a quarterback sneak. Well, Burmeister had a rushing touchdown against Tulsa. Not afraid to carry the ball. It's first and 10. The ball is on the 27. And again, the Hawkeyes have won the last two or three meetings by scoring quickly in the first quarter against Iowa State. They're trying to do the same thing again. Cliff King, right side. He's got some room all the way down to about the 11-yard line. Cedric Linwood. The Iowa offensive line is doing a great job. You see Shaw go in motion. Just a straight handoff, 69, what a great block. That's, that was the key to that run. He was untouched, and it was because of the Iowa offensive line. They're coming off the ball, and they're making their blocks. First and 10, Hawkeyes knocking on the door. King and Shaw in the backfield. I formation. Shaw, second man through. He's going to get it down to about the six-yard line, Matt Nitsche. Makes the stop for Iowa State. Let's look at the size of the hole here created by the... Watch the offensive lineman. You'll see him pair up on each of them. That hole, Keith, I could run through that. Uh, let's not get carried away. Okay, bro. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's a big hole there. Iowa has five new players, or at least first-year starters, on the offensive line, but they are huge. Six foot three and a half, 283-pound average across the line. So, yes, they're inexperienced, but no, they're not small. Terry, off tackle. He's going to get in the end zone. Touchdown, Iowa! And the Hawkeyes again score on their first possession, something that's become a tradition here in this series. Beautiful drive by the Hawkeyes. You'll see him come back. It almost looks like he's going to pull up to throw a little bit of the delay. He has to beat one man into the end zone, and he does it with very little effort. Good blocking, a good, a good little draw play here, and Iowa State just cannot maintain or hold him back. Good drive, real confidence for the Hawkeye offense. 
Romano for the PAT. He may kick this to Iowa City with the wind behind him. Well, actually, didn't go that far, but it went through the uprights, and that's what counts. With 4.58 to go in the first quarter, Iowa scores first and leads 7-0. Possession. A good, long, sustained drive by the Hawkeyes. 12 plays, 58 yards. They ate up seven minutes and 13 seconds of clock. And, of course, Ryan Terry caps it off with a six-yard run. And, Arlen, it looked like the offensive line was the, the key to that drive. The, the Cyclone defense is going to have to find a way to penetrate more. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Iowa State was playing terrible on that series. I think Iowa played excellent. They came out, they took it to them. Their offensive linemen were coming off the ball and making some good blocks. Romano will kick it off. Jim Knott and James Brooks deep for the Cyclones, but unless Romano misses part of the football here. I don't think there's going to be a return with this win behind him. Nope. Let's go down to the Iowa sideline to John Campbell. John, what do you have for us? Thank you, Keith. We're standing here behind the Iowa bench. That's the offensive line down there. They're getting uh, talked to by Frank Verducci. Hayden Fry also came over and talked to them briefly after they came off on that drive. Uh, Cliff King's big run. Arlen, you mentioned the block by 69. That's Matt Purdy from Cedar Falls. I was watching him, too. He just simply pulled out and buried his man. Iowa's offensive line has to feel good right now. I'm sure they're feeling good. That has been a big question mark for the Hawkeyes, whether that offensive line could perform without a returning starter, but no problem on that first drive. Let's see what Iowa State can do. First and 10, ball on the 20. Utter keeps it, pitches to Jim Knott, falls on the ground. Knott wisely falls on it for the Cyclones. Larry Blue putting some pressure going after that fumble. And, of course, going after a fumble is something Larry Blue's done here before. As a freshman, he recovered a fumble for a touchdown. Here's another Norwest Bank's quick, quick stat. Norwest Bank's home of unbelievable free checking. Rushing statistics favor the Hawkeyes. Ten attempts for 42 yards. Cyclones have 22 yards so far and just lost about 11 or 12 on that play. So it's second and 21. And this is where it gets kind of tough on a triple option. Absolutely. The one thing the triple option will do is it oftentimes will put that ball on a carpet. Branch finds the corner. And Olin Zach in on the stop. Solo tackle for Olin Zach and Branch has some outside speed. You know, this guy never played football until he was in the 10th grade. His PE coach saw his athletic ability in class and said, hey, we got to get you out for the football team. He did, and now he's an Iowa State Cyclone. Third and fifth, third about 13 for the Cyclones. And you got to ask, are we going to see a pass here against the wind? Again, Jim Walden has preached patience. The Cyclones found themselves down to the Northern Illinois Huskies, 7 0, also in the first quarter. Utter tripped up in the backfield. Parker Wildeman. Nice play that time by Wildeman. Hawkeyes are deep on defense. They'll play 22, 23 people today. They got eight returning starters, and Iowa State is going to have to punt it away with about three minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. And of course, the clock is a factor uh, because of the wind. Each team wants the wind behind its back, and it's Iowa that has it right now. Gregor Gallo will punt. He had a poor punt the last time into that wind. And this one goes nowhere either. Ooh, does get a roll though. And the Hawkeyes are gonna have great field position inside the 40 yard line. They'll take it over at the 37, 20 yard punt that time for Regala. Things are going Iowa's way. We'll be right back. On with the win behind his team and that's exactly what he'll try to do. So far, Iowa State has been most hurt by the punting game. They're averaging at around 20 yards a punt, maybe less. And that is hurt. First and 10. Burmeister, two for two on the day. They're going to try the pass. And he gets it away to Cliff King. Good pressure that time by Miller and Anthony Scott. Let's go down to 
Rod Bothold on the Iowa State sideline. Rod? Keith, it's uh, me and the band and Roger Gay, the equipment manager, who knew about the uniform change as early as anyone. Roger, I know it's tough to keep a secret. Tell us about all the people wondering if it's going to happen. Well, earlier this week, uh, Tuesday morning, I received my first call that there had been a rumor that there was going to be some kind of a uniform change. As late as this morning, I received another call. Ron Malley called me yesterday from the register. And I told my wife last night we were going to a pregame party. If anybody asked you, you know, you don't know anything about it. And she said, about what? And I said, about the red pants. She said, well, this is the first I knew about it. Got to keep a secret, Jeff Ryan. You must have done well, because we didn't know about it for sure until right up to kickoff, Keith. All right, thank you, Rod. It is tough to keep a secret from 55,000 people, and most people knew about the rumor. Well, Cedric Shaw picks up 10 yards on that last play, and I, and I think a, a trombone or maybe a drum set out of the band when he ran up the steps. <laughs> Shaw is an excellent running back. He seems to be able to find daylight, and you, you, you saw in the last plane, he kind of moved between defenders and scooted up. Look at Jim Walden right out there coaching this call. Ah, they're short. They're short. He's right. They are short. It's going to bring up a second down and about, uh, I, I don't know, Arlen, you can back me up on that. I say about 3.7 inches. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> Officially, second one. But we know in our hearts that it's 3.1 inches. Third and one, rather. Yeah, let's get that right. Third and one. Well, one thing the Cyclones can think about at this point is they were in the same exact situation in their first ball game, and look how that ended up. Although I have a feeling they have a much better team on the field here than Northern Illinois. Burmeister jumps up top. First down, Iowa. He likes it. Let's watch Burmeister's high jumping ability. Score it at home if you can. He likes that uh, quarterback sneak. He gets a little airborne there, gets the yardage he needs. It's working for him in short down situations, so I don't expect them to change that any. You might look for some passes coming up. The quarter's gonna change pretty soon. Hayden Fry may try to capitalize on the win. First downs, no question. Iowa with six, Iowa State with only one. Anthony Scott, Forces Shaw to the ground. This Shaw is a burner. He has all kinds of speed. He ran a leg on a national championship mile relay team in high school. He is just flat out fast. But he takes a break. And into the game, Ryan Terry. Willie Guy also checking in for Hayden Fry's Hawkeyes. Willie Guy, of course, talked about for years and played four games last year. He was at one time thought by some to be the number one prospect in the nation. Second 11. Terry will trap play. Picks up three or four and is battling for more. It's like Tim Sanders, the freshman from Chicago, in on the stop. Also, Marcus Allen. Iowa State's doing a pretty good job pursuing to the ball. You can see the movement to the left. They're following the running back. He's looking for holes, but there just isn't any. They did an excellent job in defensing that particular play. The key here for them is they can bend a little bit, but they better not break, because if they get another score against them, it's going to be hard to recover. Third down and eight. Ball at the 23. Burmeister to pass. Complete. Down to about the 18, Harold Jasper, the only returning starter for the Hawkeyes. The crowd booing the spot on the play. Let's watch the isolation on Jasper. You'll see Jasper come out and just do a little button hook. It, he kind of gets the defender driving toward the end zone, comes back in. But I don't know if it's quite enough for the first down. They marked the progress, of course. We'll see here shortly. Well, Jasper knew about where he had to be for that first down. Let's see if his math is just right, and it is by inches. The crowd booing the spot on that play. 
Well, you know, one of the things they don't understand is the, the referees are, are spotting that forward progress in that particular case. And, and like you said, Keith, they know they will vary their patterns to how far they have to go. If it's 10 yards, they're going to run 11 or 12 yard button hook. If it's not as far, they'll shorten it up and give the quarterback an advantage of accuracy. About a minute to go in the first quarter. Hawkeyes seven, Cyclones nothing. First and 10, ball on the 15. Shaw shakes off one tackler. Boy, he's quick. Tim Sanders helping bring Shaw to the ground. You'll watch Shaw, he's gonna try to get to the outside. If he gets to the outside, then it's a foot race. Bad job of tackling. You cannot arm tackle people like him. But, but luckily for Iowa State, they swarmed in and they were able to snuff that uh, movement forward out. Shaw has 16 yards, lost a yard on that play. We're going to have a second and 11. Shaw had a 75-yard kickoff return, not for a touchdown, but pretty darn close last week against Tulsa. Burmeister will try the air. He's got all day. Into the end zone, touchdown, Anthony Dean. And once again, the Hawkeyes have jumped on the Cyclones in their first two possessions. Keith, you have to watch this play from Burmeister's perspective. He sets back, seven-yard drop. He's looking, he's looking, and he finally finds somebody. Eventually, someone will come open. Iowa State's defense doing a poor job in rushing him, but he's doing a great job. Composure, and he's accurate with those passes. Oh, he had time to write a letter home on that play. I'm telling you. Of course, that's just Iowa City for him. That would probably be a short letter. Romano with the extra point. Good. 14-0 Hawkeyes, and they got that score in just before the quarter ended. We got about two seconds, so maybe Hayden Fry was aware, hey, we better pass it now. We've got one play left in this quarter. You know, you see a 14-0 score right now, and, and one, of the, one of the reasons we do is because of the wind. The wind was very contrary to Iowa State. They had two kicks. They averaged 18 yards. Uh, on those two kicks. Normally, you're looking at a 40, uh, maybe 45-yard kick against, uh, with the win, rather. It could be 50. But that put them all quarter into bad field position. That created the advantage for Burmeister and the Hawkeyes to uh, get a couple of quick scores. 37-yard scoring drive set up by the 18-yard punt and the finals uh, play of the drive, 16-yard pass from Burmeister to Jasper. And again, that play made completely possible by the fact that Burmeister could just wait and wait and wait, and finally, he found uh, Anthony Dean. One, one of the things, you know, I, I said that there wasn't much of a rush by Iowa State. We really should probably change that philosophy and just say, really, that the Iowa Hawkeye offensive line is did an exceptional job. Early on the running plays, they were making the holes possible, and like you said, he had all day to throw that pass. So it's really, I think, the Iowa offensive line is becoming a significant part of this game. Romano will get one more kick with the wind behind his back. Perfect timing for the Hawkeyes. And James Brooks will have no chance. Cyclones are going to have to run one play against the win because there are two seconds to go. Once again, if you're joining us late, Iowa State changed uniforms after the warm-up, came out about five minutes before kickoff, decked out in all red. So far, it hasn't worked. It's 14-0. One thing Iowa State needs to try to do and you've referred to it so far today, Keith, is patience. They can't change that offense significantly. They've got to continue to stay with their game plan. The Cyclone fans are wondering, is, is this the patience? Is this, is this going to break all of a sudden like it did nine days ago? Ulrich that time stopped at the line. Well, speaking of breaks, we're going to take one right now. It's 14-0 Hawkeyes, and we'll be back. Hope you will be, too. 14 Cyclones 0 after 1 
But again, Walden has said, be patient with our offense. It'll hit big at any moment. Let's see. First and 10, ball at the 20. Utter's going to try the pass with the wind at his back. Out to Horacek, overthrown. And he... well, here's a look at the Miller Genuine Draft first quarter statistics. Arlen, scan it over and tell me what really stands out to you. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist, Keith. <laughs> look at the passing. And, you know, that's been made possible by the protection that Burmeister's got. He's been poised, and he's been real accurate. And there's the key to the game. Total yards, passing, that's where it's at. I hope that wasn't any kind of jab at my degree in rocket science. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> Third down and 11 for the Cyclones. This time, Utter keeps and meets Larry Blue, reverses his field, and oh, if he had just kept going outside and turned the corner, he had all kinds of room, but he cut back right into Mike Wells, who is not a guy you want to meet if you're on the football field, that is. Kind of, a, kind of a broken play, really. You know, they were trying to move to the right side. It, it closed down in a hurry. He tried to reverse his field. Sometimes those can, you can really capitalize on a defense, moving them one way and going back the other. But in that case, it just didn't work. Greg Rogallo will punt it away, and this is not the most confident guy in the stadium right now. He averaged 18 yards a punt in the first quarter. Greg, give it a shot with the win. He needs a big punt here to help him. Still see the wind is blowing strong. Let's see how he bounces back. And this is a good high punt. Willie Guy will have a chance to return it. Looking for daylight. Nothing there. Good stop by the Cyclones. Good coverage. They swarmed him. For nine, Lamont Hill among the Cyclones making the stop. The Hawkeyes have their third possession when we come back. 2 touchdown cushion for the Hawks, and here's another Norwest Bank's quick stat. Norwest Bank's home of unbelievable free checking. And we're going to do some checking of our own here on the punting game. Iowa has not had to punt. Iowa State averaging 33 yards a punt. Two of those against the wind, one with the wind. First and 10 Hawkeyes. Ryan Terry with a lot of turf ahead of him. Waylon Harding makes the initial hit for the Cyclones. Get some help from strong safety Kevin Fulton. Iowa's offensive game is working well. Look at this hole. He cuts back, gets the movement going, and he's got, you know, yardage to gain. There's just no question that they are moving the ball well. Iowa State defense is getting tired. They're out there the entire time. When your offense goes three plays and kicks, that puts a burden on the D. You have to wonder how much confidence Iowa gained in that winning 96-yard drive last week. Terry again up the middle, and Sheldon... Napaschik on the stop. Napaschik is from Saskatchewan, Canada. A red shirt last year. He had to sit the season out just to familiarize himself with the American football rules, which he's had to get used to. Got to look there at Ryan Terry. Fumble problem last year, but Hayden Fry says he's learned to hold on to the ball, and he certainly has so far this season. Second down and four. The Cyclone defense has to be tired. The time of possession is weighed heavily in Iowa's favor. This is their third possession. They have not had to punt or try a field goal yet. Terry's going to pick up another first down. Todd Miller wrestles him down around the 39-yard line. Arlen, uh, don't want to get ahead of ourselves here, and I know Jim Walden looking a little bit frustrated there. Is it too early to say this is a crucial stop for Iowa State? Does Iowa State need to keep Iowa out of the end zone? I, you know, I, I hate to say this, but I think the crucial stop was the first possession. I think when Iowa took their first possession and went the length of the field, that did a lot for the confidence of that uh, offense uh, for no, Iowa. No. There's that, a big third down conversion in that drive, too. You bet. First and 10. Trap play this time. It looks like uh, Kent Call. Junior transfer from Colorado. Let's go down to the Iowa State sideline 
to Rod Bothold. Rod, things uh, not off to a good start for the Cyclones. Especially not offensively, Keith, and I was right behind the Iowa State bench when the Cyclones came off the field after that last three and out. Jim Walden set them down and he said, fellas, you're being too passive. We got to be more aggressive. You got to run. You got to block. You can't expect this offense to work. If you don't work hard, it's not magic. You got to work hard. Thank you, Rod, and that may be just the burden of that streak. You know, nobody wants to make a mistake. Nobody wants to be the person that uh, that causes a bad play to hurt Iowa State. And maybe that uh, maybe that's what Walden's saying. You got to go all out. You got to just play with reckless abandon. Well, you know what Rod has said is is really correct. They have to become aggressive, even if you make a mistake. Coaches don't mind if it's an aggressive mistake, but if you're playing passive and playing off the defense. Coach Walden's exactly right. They're just not going to get this offense moving. They're going to have to maintain some possession on offense. But obviously, right now, their problem, Keith, is that they're going to have to try to stop the Hawkeyes from scoring right now. Well, it's third and one. Iowa trying to make it 21-0 with another touchdown drive. They've got a two-touchdown lead now. Iowa State needs a stop here. They don't get it. Something else you notice with the Hawkeye offense, they've had real good success in making short yardage situations. Let's go down to John Campbell, and John, I imagine your sideline is much happier than the one across the way. They're pumped up over here on the Iowa sideline, that's for sure, and one of the reasons is the fact that this offense just keeps moving down the field, that offensive front to five, really doing the job, and they're gonna need to when they face Penn State next week. Well, hopefully they're not looking ahead that far yet. Cedric Shaw, he turns the corner. This guy is fast. All the way down to about the six yard line. Stopped by Waylon Harding. And you gotta keep your eye on this Shaw every minute because he can break it at any time. The fastest Hawkeye. And Hayden Fry has coached in a long time, maybe ever. Coming out of an eye back, he's just a quick pitch. He makes a lot of this on his own. Like you said, Keith, he's got a excessive speed. He's got some good moves, and he's hard to bring down in, in, uh, in the close quarters, too. First and goal to go for the Hawkeyes. Shaw again. He's all the way down to the two-yard line. Tim Sanders brings him down. And I can tell you one thing, just from the change since we started this game, the crowd is out of this game right now. They're, well, certainly the Iowa State crowd is. Watch this play develop. Fullback leads, uh, makes a nice block, and gets some yardage. You know, the thing here is everybody on that Iowa Hawkeye team is doing a sensational job in picking up blocks. Offensive linemen are staying with them for a long time so that the backs can get through there and into the uh, defensive backfield. And off Shaw, touchdown, Iowa. Well, Shaw got the touchdown he deserved. He led much of that drive. Had the big play, too. And Iowa State is in a hole that I don't think they ever thought they'd be in. Another end zone shot. You'll see just a straight dive off tackle. And Shaw gets, as you said, the touchdown that he deserves since he took him pretty close to the length of the field. Five new starters on, the, on that offensive line for Iowa, but their inexperience is not showing today. One of the things, Keith, excuse me, you see a lot of the Iowa State players during that thing just standing around. That's what they need. They need to be more aggressive, like Rod was saying earlier from the sideline. I think for one thing, they are stunned. Do you know anybody that thought it would be 21 to nothing Hawkeyes early in the second quarter? That's the score. Ball has blown off the tee again. Romano will have to kick it into the wind. It's just not wanting to stay. They'll do one of two things. They'll have uh, somebody hold it perhaps, or he's going to lay it down flat. I've seen that done a few times, and uh, just do a sk squib kick uh, as in more of a line drive, not getting it up into the wind. So it'll be real interesting to see what the kickoff looks like from this other side. Well, the Hawkeyes need to stay on their toes, too, because in this win, this ball could end up squibbing in about any direction. As uh, James Brooks and Jim Knott, they're lined up to receive this kick on about the 15-yard line, so that's how strong the wind is and the ball is going to have to be held right now it's Tom Knight holding the ball it's straight up in the air fair catch by Lamont Hill 
Well, Iowa State is going to get to start with good field position, and Jim Walden talking to Bob Utter, the Big 8's Offensive Player of the Week. Just telling him, let's go out there, and like Rod said from the sideline, let's, uh, let's be a little more fearless. Let's play with a little more abandon, you know, reckless abandon and just get after it. Uh, you'll see, uh, I think, that uh, they need to go out. Iowa State needs to go out and have a little fun with this thing. They need to get out there and hit some people. They can't be standing around. As you say, a little more aggressiveness. Well, let's see what happens. This is the first drive where the wind will be behind them on every play. They had it part of the drive last time. Of course, it was just three and out. First and ten. Utter keeps it. Larry Blue brings him down at the 40. There are Hawkeye fans here. Several thousand Iowa fans on hand, of course. The majority, naturally, from Iowa State. And a very quiet crowd right now unless you're wearing the old gold and black I think the Cyclone fans uh, are somewhat stunned. Oh I think that uh, the Hawkeyes have taken the fans totally out of the game at this point. Except their own. <laughs> right. <laughs> Second and eight. I have to see a pass pretty soon I would think. Hutter turns the corner pitches McMillian finds a little room Hartleaf stands him up. That's John Hartlieb, brother, of course, Chuck, an all Big Ten quarterback a few years back for Iowa. Jim Hartlieb, the quarterback last year for the Hawkeyes. Watch the option here. You see the timing just didn't work. He stumbled over the fullback, utter stumbled, and then by the time he got the ball out to the uh, running back, there was just a little bit of a problem uh, with blockers starting to convene in there. It just, uh, they're just not meshing very well. There are three key mesh points in that offense. The crowd pumps up again, third and one. McMillian, the second man through. He's got a first down for the Cyclones. Mike Daly brings McMillian down after a gain of about five yards. And Iowa State, a first down for the first time since the opening of this game. They had a first down real quick and then haven't done much since. Of course, the defensive team has been on the field, and Arlen, that first down right there gives the defense more rest. Oh, it absolutely does. And and it, it gives the defensive coordinator and their staff time to adjust to what Iowa's been doing. First and 10, 46-yard line. Utter keeps, McMillian on the corner. Three or four more for McMillian. Wells on the stop. We're gonna go down to the Iowa State sideline and Rod Bodhold. Rod, uh, the feeling of hopelessness over there, or do you feel like uh, the Cyclones think they can get right back in it? They're still hanging in here, Keith, but I'll tell you what, Iowa has had three drives, as you know, and they've all resulted in touchdowns. Robin Ross, defensive coordinator for Iowa State, gathered his troops after that last touchdown and said, fellas, it ain't no magic what's going on out there. They are whooping us in the trenches. You gotta get the line of scrimmage going the other way. That's about as simple as you can put it right there, Arlen. They are whooping us in the trenches. And that's a correct statement. That is. Second down, five. Hand off. Artis Garris, he's got some running room. He's down to the 22-yard line. Olin Zach on the stop. And the Cyclone fans hope again. This is an exciting part of the of the triple option. The quarterback, everybody thought. You look to see the defensive end from Iowa. They thought he took the ball out. He didn't, and that results in a big play. So this offense is capable of it if they'll hang with it, and they'll be persistent and aggressive. Garris was the leading ball carrier for the Cyclones a week ago. First and ten. And Garris again, not much there, maybe two yards. Jeff Andrews and Chris Webb, or Larry Blue and Chris Webb on the stop. Well, it worked once. Let's see if it'll work again. Tough yardage when you get down here around the 20-yard line, but he keeps his legs moving. You know, he's determined. They, by no means, Iowa State hasn't given up. Uh, they have a chance in this game, so if they play some uh, football here, they can get back into it, perhaps. Second and eight, ball on the 20. Cyclones want to score. McMillian, he's got some room. Cuts it down to about the nine-yard line. Hart lead on the tackle. James McMillian 
much more well known for his punt returns, but he's a fine back and uh, has played quite a bit in this game so far. Hasn't had a chance to return a punt, so you got to get him, got to get him the ball somehow. You know, excellent. They're starting now. Iowa State's starting to come off the ball. It's kind of like being in a fight. You get your nose bloodied, and you have to get tough and dig in and start being aggressive yourself. The Cyclones have moved it inside the 10-yard line. First and goal to go. Ball to nine. Utter keeps. The pitch to Branch. Gets around the corner. He's arm tackled by Olenzak. Gets down to around the six. Branch and Garris, what they call the pony package at Iowa State. Pony package both in on that play. Not much of an option there to the, it was almost a preconceived pitch. He just threw the ball at him, didn't hold anybody in. It stretches the defense out, and they're able to pin him down with uh, not too much of a game. Nice tackle by Olenzak in the open field. He led the team in tackles a year ago. Second down, six. Goal to go. Garris, first man through, keeps it, finds room, touchdown, Cyclones! And Iowa State answers with a nice drive of its own. Just a straight handoff to that fullback on the dive. They were in what we call a true wishbone type offense. It, the option can be run off of different uh, offenses, but this is a true wishbone. First back through, the fullback gives it, and he's got great leg drive. He did in the play uh, right before that also. Stewart's extra point is good, and the Cyclones are on the board. Is it a new ball game? We'll find out when we come back. The Cyclones have cut it to 21-7. It's the Hawkeye defense that needs a breather now. Iowa State with a good drive, making the score 21-7 and getting the fans back in it. Exactly what Jim Walden has said over and over again, our offense, we just got to kind of Get the defense, think and dive, think and dive, and then confuse them with the two and three backs through. A 62-yard drive, nine plays. Garris caps it off with a six-yard run. Four minutes and 50 seconds, which gives the Iowa State defense a rest. So now we know Iowa State can drive the ball, Arlen. I guess the question is, can Iowa State's defense stop Iowa? So far, the answer has been a definite no. Yeah, the Iowa offensive line has done a great job with uh, Iowa State's defense. That's going to be a real question here in the latter stages of the second quarter. Um, whether or not they've had the time to rest up and regroup is yet to be determined. But with, uh, with any luck for the Cyclones, they'll make it somewhat of a game. Well, Stewart to kick off, bounces through the uprights. That doesn't count for anything, though. Maybe it should be one and a half points or something, but no, no. And Iowa's going to take over, first and 10 on the 20. Well, the Hawkeye offense has to have a lot of confidence going for itself right now. They've just done about anything they want to so far on the ground and in the air. And the key, that offensive line, with no returning starters. There's only one returning starter on the entire Iowa offense. That's Harold Jasper, the wideout on the bottom of your screen. Burmeister did start three games when Jim Hartley went down last year. And Iowa State with a good stick in the backfield, but there's a penalty marker on the field. Kevin Fulton. You know, that's kind of interesting. That is the first flag of the, the day also, Keith. And, you know, when we have a game that's as tough as an interstate situation, you usually see more penalties. You know, and you don't notice that the penalties aren't Illegal there until motion. you finally... Honey, offense. Honey, offense. Penalties decline. Second out. Jim Kemmerling explaining to us what happened. Iowa State declining. You don't really miss the penalties, and then you see one out there, and all of a sudden you notice, hey, we haven't had a penalty in nearly a half of football which is pretty good, especially in your second game. You usually get a little sloppy out of the gates, but not so far. Hayden Fry, 11-3 versus Iowa State, including, of course, by now, you know, and you've probably heard too much, 10 in a row. I'll try not to say that again at least for five minutes. Cliff King brought down by Tim Sanders, and Iowa State seems like it's coming to life. 
I, I think that that rest that the offense gave their defense, I think maybe that the coaches have been able to regroup the defense. We're, steady, we're starting to see some penetration on the part of the defensive line into the uh, offense of the Hawkeyes. And, and that's making a difference. You can see it right now. We'll find out. This is a very similar situation that the Hawks had on their first drive. Third and 11, Iowa State had made two good stops, but then the Hawkeyes converted a pass for the first down. Burmeister pitches to Terry. He has room, and the Hawkeyes do it again. Cedric Linwood makes the stop, and that's the same thing that happened on that first possession. They made a couple of good stops, got some confidence, third and 11, boom, Iowa breaks the big one. A real good comeback. They're deep in their hole. Iowa State stopped them, but he makes uh, one good break of a tackle there, and it takes a while to pull them down, and of course, the first down, they'd, left, they'd led them to get back into good field position, and that spells trouble because the Iowa offense is running well. And you know the Cyclone offense would like that ball back now. You know, they've got the confidence, they've got the wind behind them. Burmeister, draw play, Shaw, and stuck hard by Nitsche. Nitsche out of Lincoln, Nebraska, junior. Here's the freshman, Shaw. You see Burmeister come back. He has a pretty nice little fake there. Looks like he's going to drop back and pass. Hands off to Shaw, but Iowa State was up to that challenge. Uh, I, I think you made a good point a minute ago, Keith. We've got about three minutes left. Iowa State would like to get the ball back. We'll see if they do right after this. We'll try to do it this time. Second and six, ball on the 40-yard line. 60 yards away from the end zone. Burmeister to King. He's got a big hole in the middle. He rumbles all the way down to about the 38-yard line. Cliff King. Cedric Linwood finally yanks him down, and I think King was surprised at the size of that hole. Fullbacks aren't used to going through anything that big. Yeah, and I'm afraid if he'd have had the speed of, uh, of Guy or somebody like that, he would have been in the end zone. Yeah, if, if it had been Shaw, the cheerleaders would be doing 28 push-ups right now. Exactly. First and 10, ball down to the 37. Kings in the backfield going, give me a hole like that again, I'll take it. Reverse to Terry. And he's gonna get it down to about the 30-yard line. Troy Peterson, who did not start, has that sore right ankle. Uh, questionable for today's game, but he is playing. Let's go down to Rod Botthold. Uh, Rod, things got to be picking up a little bit over there. Absolutely, Keith. You know, that touchdown gave the Cyclones confidence, and it also gave the fans something to cheer about. Proof of that, the Orange has tradition to fill the field with them. I know you guys worked right through the noon hour. I could send this up your way if you're looking for something to eat. Well, you know, oranges are good for you. If you get a chance, that'd be nice. Second and four, ball on the 31-yard line. Burmeister pitches back to Shaw. Iowa has not needed to pass against the win. And this Shaw is a freshman who looks like he has big things ahead of him at Iowa. The state of Iowa will see a lot of him uh, if he doesn't get injured. He's uh, really he got some potential. Well, speaking of injuries, I think we have one down on the field right now. Marcus Allen, who stopped Shaw that time. Looks like his headgear is being worked on. Allen out of Dowling High School in West Des Moines. He's gonna take a break. He doesn't look to be seriously injured. Nope, trainer Frank Randall, it looks like, getting him off. Frank's probably been around athletic training in the Iowa State Cyclones longer than anybody else. A real good one. In fact, he used to work on me when I get hurt. That's how long he's been around. Keith. Wow, he has been, huh? Wow, so he, he worked on players with the leather helmets. Yeah. I didn't know that. Kent Call up the middle down to the 18, and Iowa is marching without a lot of resistance once again. There's about a minute 45 on the clock, so... Uh, you got to think it becomes crucial for Iowa State to keep them out of the end zone. You don't want to go into the halftime down 28-7 with a team that's supposed to run the ball a lot. That's when wishbone and triple option teams usually have a problem. 
uh, is when they have to make a comeback and they run all the time. But Iowa State has been able to successfully pass out of the triple option because they have Bob Utter. A lot of triple option teams cannot do that. Second five, call again. Hit by Sanders, fumble on the play, or no, just a, a pile of diving players. So, saw one fumble early by Iowa State. Uh, Utter put it on the ground, but no turnovers thus straight, far. Straight dive play, and it, it looked to be that there was space on either side, and he ran right into the pile. And, of course, that may be the excitement of it. He's trying to get close to the end zone, not trying to fumble, those kinds of things. So he's probably not looking. He's got more of that tunnel vision. Let's go down to John Campbell, who has a very familiar face. Indeed we do, Keith. This is Lou Montgomery, the former Iowa fullback from Waterloo. Lou, your impressions of the Iowa ground game today? I'm very impressed. Um, they've been doing a good job of running the ball, keeping um, uh, things rolling, especially on a windy day like today. It's going to be very important that they have a good running game. You've seen uh, Cedric Shaw in practice. Is he going to be a good one for the Hawks? He's going to be a, a darn good one. He's, um, he really runs hard. He, he's quick, and uh, he's going to do a good job in the future. Uh, Hayden Fry is going to milk this clock and try to put it in the end zone right before the buzzer, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, that's what I expect the, uh, Coach Fry to do. He's going to run it all the way down and uh, probably give it off to one of the running backs to win for the score. Okay, Lou, thank you very much. Keith? All right, thank you, John. Good to see Lou Montgomery again. Third and three. Iowa State looking for a big play. Hawkeyes looking for a touchdown. Pitch to Shaw. He's got the corner. He's got the first down tackled by Fulton. Big play here, Arlen. That's right. Whenever they give it to Shaw, it seems like it is. There's some good blocking. You see him picking up the defensive backs and the cornerback coming up, and he gets some yards. Big Lou was right. This Shaw is going to be a good one. And the other thing he was right about is I don't think you'll see Aiden Fry pass the ball. He's going to run it into the end zone or try to before the halftime. Hasn't passed it so far on this drive. Hasn't needed to. It's uh, first down, nine. Goal to go. Paul has a big hole. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. Ken Call through a huge hole by the offensive line, and he just walked in. Boy, the Hawkeyes offensive line is doing a super job. Offensive line coach Frank Verducci should be complimented on his ability to coach these guys. They're in a power eye formation, and it's just a little handback which opens up. It moves the flow of the defense one way, the running back goes the other way, and the result is an Iowa Hawkeye score. Wind picking up quite a bit. 27 7 Romano for the extra point. Good. It's 28-7 Hawkeyes, and that was an impressive drive. Iowa has scored a touchdown every time it's touched the ball in this game. Talking about confidence from the Iowa offense, they, they are just doing one superb job. I was mentioning Coach Frank Verducci from Iowa. Uh, they had a questionable uh, offensive line. They're very young, inexperienced, but I think he's proved that they can do a very good job, and the Big Ten better watch out. Well, this team certainly looks more impressive than it did against Tulsa last week, although the Hawks got the, the drive, as it's being called, the drive when they needed it. 96 yards for a touchdown and a two-point conversion with 53 seconds to go. This Hawkeye offense has just been awesome in the first half. Iowa State hasn't been able to stop the pass or the run or the scoreboard from reaching 28 before the half. And that had to take a, a little bit out of Iowa State there. They had some momentum. They scored a touchdown. And uh, the Hawks just come right back and put another score on the board. You look at the drive, 11 plays, 80 yards. Took nearly five minutes and call the transfer from Colorado with the nine-yard run for the score. Romano will kick it off, and this time James Brooks and Jim Knott are on the 20-yard line. Now, that's, you don't see that very often. Let's see if Romano can get it over their heads or if the wind really... No, he puts it on the ground, and Lamont Hill fakes the option. He's got some room over on this side. Hill throws a move. He's up to the 45. He turns the corner, the 50, down to the 40. Another cutback. Nice run, Lamont Hill. 
24 seconds to go. Does Iowa State have enough time to put more points on the board? One advantage that they have is they are with the wind right now. You'll see the replay. A little squib kick that comes through. He picks up, gets the uh, Hawkeyes going one way, turns it back, makes a couple of, you know, uh, really nice moves. They're trying to hand tackle him. You can't hand tackle somebody in the open field like that. They finally wrestle him down about the 40-yard line. Good field position. They've got the win. They can put the ball up and get a score here if they uh, hurry up. Let's see what they do. Nice return by Hill. He's had experience at running back. He showed it there. First and 10, Cyclones, 39-yard line. Utter looking to pass. He's got pressure on him. He breaks out of there. Mike Wells with the sack. He is Iowa's career sack leader, and with that stop for a loss, sets a new or ties a record for the tackles for loss, 39. That ties Jim Johnson for the all-time Iowa record. Just a terrific player, one of the best defensive linemen in the country. Well, and, and real good defense uh, on behalf of the, the Hawks there. You saw Iowa State go back to throw. There's a picture of Wells up there doing a great job in that D-line. He went back to throw. Utter didn't have the time that Burmeister has had, and that is a key factor. He can't find the receivers. He can't throw the ball. Well, that is exactly what Utter and Walden did not want to do, is lose five yards with this much time on the clock. There's down to 17 seconds. The Cyclones had the ball in the 39-yard line, and they go six yards in the other direction. And now they're pretty much going to have to pass it or count on a run, just catching everybody by surprise. Well, you know, don't sell the triple option short. I can remember it was back in the 70s, this going back a long time, Keith, but we were playing Oklahoma. We had them down 21-0 at halftime. They came in back and beat us 28-27. to not many teams have ever run the triple option like Oklahoma. That's Iowa State, true. Iowa State looked like the Sooners last week, though. Nobody in the backfield. Utter's going to pass. Up high for Horacic, and that is intercepted by Scott Plate. Not a good pass that time. Just too high. Horacic went up to get it and tapped it in the air. And you know that tip drill you do at every football practice in America? Well, that's why they do it right there. Ball tapped in the air, and Scott yeah. Plate had a flashback to high school drills and pulled it down. It was underthrown, and it was too high. He just got enough of it. If, In fact, if he'd have left it go, it would have been better off. Well, Plate gets a gift right in his hands, and Iowa with 13 seconds to go against the win. I don't think they're going to try anything here except go to the locker room up by 21 points. Three players in the backfield for Iowa. Ernest Crank cranks it out to about the 30. Second down and eight or so, but it won't matter. That's going to be the end of the first half. Well, it wasn't boring, but it was mostly Hawkeyes. Iowa leads it 28 to 7. We weren't short on highlights. We've got a lot more coming your way, so. Come on back to Cyclone Stadium. If they want to get back into it, it has to reverse that, and Iowa State's offense has to do some controlled drives, make a couple of big plays to get back into this thing. Well, it's going all Hayden Fry's way so far, but we've got a lot of football left to play. And, of course, this series has taught us, even though it's gone Iowa's way the past 10 years, that uh, the score... You never know. There have been some good comebacks in this series, as you saw in the pregame show. Not out of the question. Jim Walden sure would like to take that zero off the record you see on your screen. Uh, that's got to be totally frustrating for a coach. He to, looks frustrated there. Oh, isn't he? certainly. You know, to, to be 0 and 6 and, and uh, 0 4 in the Big Ten also. And uh, he would like to change it. But unless something drastically happens out on the field, that's probably not going to happen. Well, we'll see. Turnovers could could make a difference. So could this win. Ty Stewart having trouble keeping it on the tee. Blows off again. He may need a holder for this. And I think he's going to designate somebody to hold it. No, not yet. Well, once again, the site. Yes, he is. There we go. 
James Brooks is going to take a knee and hold the football for Stewart. Once again, the Cyclones came out at the beginning of the game uh, in these new red uniforms. They broke them out of the box for today's effort so far. They haven't produced any magic, but it did get the crowd very excited when they first came out. I never had to do it, Keith, but I would think it'd be a real disadvantage to have to hold the football, get up, then sprint down the field and make a tackle. Of course, as slow as I was, I couldn't afford to have any other delays. <laughs> I don't think there's going to be any tackle on this kick by Stewart. That looked like it was through the uprights. Let's go down to John Campbell on the Iowa sideline. John? Keith, thank you. We had a chance to talk to Ted Gill, who kind of runs defensive things down here during the course of the game. He's very pleased with how they're doing so far. He said they won Cyclone Drive. Uh, his team just made some basic mistakes. Otherwise, he said the Cyclones are throwing nothing real new at them that they didn't expect. Rod? The Iowa State sideline, John. Marcus Allen, linebacker, got dinged in the head in the second quarter. Just talked to Frank Randall, the trainer. He says it's a concussion, and Marcus Allen is done for the day. Oh, well, that's a blow to the Cyclone defense just when it doesn't need one. Marcus Allen from West Des Moines, Dowling. We saw him kind of stagger off the field after he tackled Cedric Shaw. Looks like he will not be playing again. Concussion. First and 10, Ryan Terry on the corner. He gets about 11 yards, and we're going to have a flag, and I think you know what it's for. Ooh. That's a face mask. And that, that looked was, like it hurt. Yeah, that, look, uh, that looks like it'll be... A big penalty, and that's not what the Cyclone defense needed to start this second half. A big gain and a big penalty on top of it. You bet. He takes that pitch off. He's going wide. Now you want to know why it's uh, illegal to pull a face mask? This is why, because it can really hurt a player. Look at how that head is ripped clearing around. Almost takes the helmet right off of him. That is dangerous. And that's why they assess the penalties. And that's why Ryan Terry will wake up with a sore neck tomorrow. Yeah, he's having it worked on it right now. It may not take till tomorrow. His hair, as you saw on that replay, his head went all the way around. He was able to look at the stands behind him. Mm, Terry's having a good day, too. 74 yards, 13 attempts. He had 80 yards against Iowa State last year. He'll take a break. Hawkeyes have it first and 10 on the 20. And, uh, what happened here to put it back on the 20? That was, that was the penalty that was assessed. I don't know exactly. I wasn't following the action right there, Keith, but the result of the penalty. Nice tackle by Scott that time. You bet. Well, we've got a second down and eight. Paul Burmeister, the senior quarterback from Iowa City. Always dreamed of being a Hawkeye, and here he is, starting in the game he grew up on. Mike Shaw on the flat. This guy can turn it on. He's up to the 30, should be close to a first down. And an exchange of words, a little bit going on. There hasn't been much in the way of that at all so far in this half. Mark Lillibridge on the tackle that time for the Cyclone defense. You see Matt Ide sending the signals in there. He's number 14. He was the starter when Jim Hartley first went down last year, but Hawkeyes satisfied with his performance and turned to Burmeister, who won two of the last three games. He's the starter this year. Third down one. And this time, the Cyclones may have stopped the Hawkeyes. It's going to be close. Anthony Scott with the initial push there. No, first down. Close that time. Take a, take a look at this hit. Just a little crossing maneuver. Oh, that's the way they teach him to tackle. Get that head there and the numbers, wrap the arms around and pull him down. It was a good tackle, but he still gained the first down. Kevin Lazard laying the helmet on Shaw that time. Burmeister has a first and 10. Iowa has not had to punt all day. Quarter just underway inside handoff. The Paschik and a host of other Cyclones on the stop. Picked up about two or three yards. 
way as an offensive coach, that's an enviable position to say, well, we never did get to punt. That tells you a little bit about what the offense is doing. Well, the Hawkeyes have two punters if we ever see them. Nick Gallery, number 46, and Brian Hurley, number 20. Jim Walden sure would like to see those punters. They're both freshmen. Gallery had a 69-yarder against the win last week against Tulsa. Terry, his neck must be okay. Picks up four or five yards. Peterson leads the Cyclone charge. You know, sometimes, sometimes we end up stopping ourselves on these drives. You notice there really wasn't a tackle. He just tripped over one of the Iowa State players. Otherwise, he may have gained some more yardage. Yeah, give Peterson credit, though. He's down on the ground with his face looking at the turf, and he, he wants this win so badly, he just stuck a hand up and, and got a hand on Ryan Terry. Nobody in the backfield on third and four. Burmeister, quarterback draw, a lot of room. He's going to get it up close to midfield. Cedric Linwood comes up and stops him, and Burmeister got hit hard. That's why quarterbacks slide. Look at the pain on his face. Definitely a called play. You can see him take a few steps. They probably saw something uh, the first half whenever he went drop back, and uh, you can see there that uh, he got the game, but like he, like uh, he said, he kind of paid for that in a, in a terrible way. Yeah, the Cyclone defensive backs will hit you. Burmeister averaging five yards a carry. First and 10. Hawkeyes approaching midfield. Ryan Terry approaching the 100-yard mark. He's busted out of there, down to the 34-yard line. Kevin Fulton brings him down, and Terry has to be close to 100 yards. Terry's doing an excellent job of running the ball. Remember, near the end of the game, Arlen and I will be selecting the pioneer player of the game. Ryan Terry, certainly a candidate at this point, and Cedric Shaw, another one. How'd you like to have two backs like that play in the same position? Oh, it'd be excellent. I'm sure that's a predicament that uh, Coach Fry loves to be in. I, I don't think he minds. First and 10 on the 34. Here's Terry again. Oh, he's just stood straight up. And he keeps going. Jeff Cole hit Terry, stood him up, and he bounced off. And we've got a little bit of a scuffle up at the 35-yard line, but they break it up and get back to their respective huddles. Let's watch the hit on Terry. Yeah, it, it, this this shows the, his ability, though. I mean, Whoa. they stop him cold, but he never gives up. He's got great leg drive. He is determined, and I want to tell you, he is a good running back. That's what you look for in a running back. He, he is a good one. Terry had a problem fumbling the ball, put it on the turf too many times last year, but uh, it's, he has not fumbled so far this season. Second and one. The Hawkeyes on their fifth drive of the day. It's easy to remember what drive they're on because they've scored every time they have the ball. Shaw in the corner. The pass trick gets a hand on him. Doesn't bring him down. Finally, it's Mark Lillibridge with some help from his friends. Okay, this is your football clinic. Watch this spin move. Let's see if we get it. Here Shaw is. He's cutting back just spins, keeps his feet and his balance, and picks up another couple of three yards. Excellent job, excellent job. You know, I think we all thought this game was gonna come down to Iowa State's offense versus Iowa's defense, because that's where each team is experienced. That was each team's strength. But it's been just the opposite. It's Iowa State's defense trying to stop Iowa's offense. King inside, picks up a few more. And then Sanders with the tackle. They've had their hands full in that regard. Well, you have to wonder how tired the Cyclone D must be and whether it's starting to work on their minds that they just can't stop Iowa. I mean, they have not stopped them one time. Well, here's a Norwest Bank's quick stat, and first downs, get a load of this. Iowa with 20, Iowa State just five. Second and six, King continuing the leg drive, spins off Troy Peterson's tackle. Peterson does bring him down, though. And that is going to bring up third down, or second down. What do we have? 
Third down and four. Cliff King with 51 yards, and the Hawkeyes are running up some big numbers right now. They've got several backs with a lot of yardage. Well, yeah, it doesn't seem to make a difference uh, whether it's uh, Terry or Shaw or King. It, you know, they seem to all be doing well. Third down and four. Another crucial stop attempt for the Cyclones. Burmeister looking to pass. He gets some pressure, throws it into the end zone. And a penalty is called. Be interesting to see who it's on. It didn't look from our vantage point like there was any interference. They waved it off. They're saying the ball was uncatchable. The ball was ruled uncatchable. Oh, good call that time because I, there was no way that uh, the ball would be caught. Burmeister rolling to buy some time. He's really quite poised. He's looking downfield, trying to pick a receiver. He, they happen to be covered. There may be some uh, accidental bumping, but the, the pass was not catchable, so there was no penalty. That play looked a lot like the two-point conversion against Iowa or against Tulsa last week. Romano with a field goal attempt. Good. He nails it. And the Hawkeyes score on their fifth drive of the day. They increased their lead to 31-7, and they used up a lot of clock doing it. The Hawkeyes do it again, their fifth possession, their fifth score. This time, though, just three points, a field goal, but they ate up a lot of clock, and that's just what Iowa State did not need to have happen. Let's take a look at the scoring drive. 13 plays, 80 yards. Romano with the 29-yard field goal. He's now five for five on the season. And there's, on the right side of your screen, there is the crucial element of that drive. Seven minutes, five seconds. That doesn't give the Cyclones much time to get some of these points back because they just watched the defense stay on the field for almost half a quarter. Well, that's If you were going to draw it up at the half, you would probably say, go out there and use up as much time as you can if you're the Hawkeyes, and that's just what they did. They didn't get the touchdown they wanted, but 31 points is looking like a lot right now. Well, and they and they won't use any time uh, or stop, try to stop the time. They won't pass the ball. They don't have to pass the ball. They're running rush shot over the Iowa State defense, so they, I imagine they'll just continue to do that for the next quarter and a half. And keep in mind, in another eight minutes, they'll have the ball with the win. Lamont Hill had that... Nice run back last time. He's breaking loose again down to the 40-yard line. Lamont Hill taking advantage of the short kick into the win. Let's take another look at Lamont Hill. You'll see uh, Iowa State's wall begin to set up there. He cuts back around the wall. And, you know, I've been fairly impressed with him on those last two returns. He has kind of picked the spots. He's looked for the open field. And that's the real key to an open field runner or a punt returner, kick returner. Well, James McMillian, the preseason All-American punt returner for Iowa State, has not touched the ball on a punt or a kick today. And Bob Utter's numbers tell the story. Zero completions, zero yards, one interception, no touchdowns. That looks a little different than seven for nine for 206 yards and three scores of nine days ago. And you can tell the difference on the scoreboard. First and 10, Iowa State with good possession. They need a touchdown in a hurry. Utter has the wind at his back. One, about eight minutes. Back to pass, wide open. Calvin Branch, and he drops it. You know, that might have been one of those situations where he was trying to run with the ball before he caught it. He was looking upfield. He knew there wasn't anyone coming. You'll see it here. Utter takes his drop. It's a quick drop. It's a two-step and just floats it over the line. He's probably looking upfield, trying to turn. He misses the ball because he wasn't paying close enough attention. Well, his eyes got as big as Hilton Coliseum when he saw all that room in front of him. And Utter does not deserve to be 0 for 3 now, but it's second and 10. Ulrich fakes. Utter keeps it. 
gets outside. He's hit hard by Olenzak. Utter with a nice keeper that time, picked up about 10 yards on the play. So they fake the dive play to Ulrich. Utter keeps it, decides not to pitch. Well, I think, you know, it's one of those, he's probably getting pretty frustrated too. Uh, he's 0 for 3. There, I heard a coach say one time, there are three things that can happen when you throw the ball. Incomplete, complete, or intercept. And he's had two out of the three bad things happen. And none of the good things. Exactly. <laughs> but give the, the uh, Cyclones credit. They bounce back from the drop pass and pick up a first down. Ball on the 30. Ulrich inside. The groundhog picks up about four yards. Matt Hilliard meets him at the 25-yard line. Parker Wildeman also in there helping out. You know, one thing uh, you, you have to give credit for in this game, there hasn't been really any fights that have broken out. There hasn't been any, uh, all week long, there's been no nasty comments back and forth. And the referees have done a terrific job of just letting these guys play with very few penalties. Second down, six. On the 26. Guys faking blitz. Utter's going to try the air again. And nobody will catch that. The guy with the best shot, uh, probably in the front row. Well, Jim Walden looking at his options. And supposedly on every play, he has three of them. That's why you have the triple option. Let's see which one he picks this time. A frustrating day for Bob Utter. Big 8 Offensive Player of the Week with the game of his life last week. I think he'd just as soon forget that 0 for 4, 0, 1, 0. Not bad if you're a pitcher with an ERA, but not what you want when you're a quarterback. Let's see what happens on third and six. The Cyclones pretty much need to score when they touch the ball now. Side fake to Ulrich. Utter keeps it. He's going to have some room. Gets to the corner, then pitches. Branch puts it on the ground. Recovered by... The Cyclones first and goal to go. The ball bounces their way. Haracic recovers the fumble. We need to see this again. This is the perfect example of the triple option. He takes it to the end. Now, watch Knight. He gets strung out between the two people and then pitches it back. There's a fumble because he wasn't expecting it. It was on the carpet, but a good break for the Cyclones there. They recovered it. And Branch having a tough time hanging on to the ball. He's dropped a pass and a pitch on this drive, but he comes through now and gets it down to about the one-yard line. Let's go to John Campbell, who has an injury update on the Iowa sideline. John? Keith, uh, you're looking at Paul Burmeister and trainer Ed Crowley. They've been working down here, stretching out. He apparently has something in the lower back that is bothering him. He did throw the ball down here, however, and looked like he was throwing okay, but he continues to stretch out, and Crowley keeps a close eye on him. Keith? Thank you very much, John. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Second goal to go for the Cyclones. Utter keeps it, gets inside. Touchdown, Cyclones, but we have a flag on the play. Jim Walden wants to know what it is. A lot of times you'll see holding in this situation. We'll know quickly. The response by the Cyclone fans. Offsides, Hawkeyes decline, touchdown, Utter. And we have a ball game. Good. He, he goes Burns ahead and keeps. He gets a couple of hits, but he makes it into the end zone for the touchdown. Here's another look at it. He fakes that uh, dive play and then just keeps it all the way. The Hawkeyes were there, but Utter was able to get through. Ty Stewart for the extra point. It's good. Well, if you like offense, you're tuned to the right channel. We've got more of it coming your way. We'll be right back to Cyclone Stadium. Jim Walden and the Cyclones try to make a game of it. It's 31-14 in the third, and Arlen, is it too early for an onside kick with this win the way it is? No, it really isn't. Uh, this might be a good time for it. Number one, a little bit of a surprise factor, but Iowa State needs to get the ball back as long as they have the win to their back. So they may try it. It's a possibility. Well, it's not going to take the Hawkeyes by surprise. They have nobody beyond the 15-yard line. They're expecting 
something and they're not going to get it. They were expecting maybe a high kick and Iowa State hoping to run under it, but instead Stewart just cranks it all the way into the end zone and the Hawkeyes will gladly take over at the 20. Let's go back down to John Campbell and see if we have an update on Burmeister's condition, John. I talked to trainer Ed Crowley. He said he got a helmet right in the lower back. It stiffened up. He says he's okay. He'll be in there. Thank you, John. Uh, we can all recall that play where he, uh, the quarterback uh, keeper there, the draw play, and he just got a helmet hard. Yeah, I think you had even mentioned he probably paid for those yards, and he did. He got a helmet speared. Well, he's having a heck of a day today. You know, seven of the last ten all Big Ten quarterbacks have been from Iowa. Burmeister really not expected to be one this year, but who knows? Ryan Terry, Todd in the backfield, Todd Miller with the initial stick, and then he's joined by several Cyclones. Iowa State trying to get some momentum. Let's watch it again. There's Peterson. Okay, look at the nose guard. He's off center. He's being blocked. He forces his way in. All he did, all he did was disrupt the mesh point in the backfield. That was enough to cause the, the running back to uh, have to rechange his course. And, of course, uh, Iowa State's defense caught up with him then. Iowa's flagged for holding on the offense. Decline. Second down. Well, you got it straight out of the main guy's mouth there, holding against Iowa, and probably one of the main reasons you want to decline, besides the fact that Iowa State just stopped him for a negative loss, is the last thing you need is Iowa getting an extra play with the clock if you're Iowa State. You don't want them having more opportunities. <laughs> Iowa State needs the ball back and needs it back soon. Second down 12. The Hawkeyes have been impressive on offense. Cedric Shaw... Oh, and he's met and stuck by Mark Lillibridge. Out of Marion Linmar. He's come off the bench, wasn't even listed on the two deep roster, and this guy's had several tackles. You bet. All they're doing, Iowa State's penetrating one or two men into the backfield, disrupting the backfield, and then, then getting involved. Look at that uh, leg that's being pulled back in the back. That, uh, I'll tell you what, that puts a strain on the old body. The AstroTurf is not very forgiving. It is third and 15. Iowa State has the opportunity to stop Iowa for the first time today. Draw play. Cedric Shaw looking for the corner. This time they won't get it. Tim Sanders, the first one to get an arm on Shaw. So a moral victory for Iowa State and maybe a chance to get a drive going with the wind at their backs. Well, as we speak, when they when they stopped them there, the fans from Iowa State had stood up to applaud the defense because, Keith, it was the first time they stopped them without a score today. Nick Gallery from Masonville, Iowa, 69-yard punt last week against the wind, and this one may go backwards. It does bounce the other way, but that's going to be about a six or seven yard punt, and you can feel the momentum shift here at Cyclone Stadium. That is a three yard punt by Nick Gallery. No 69 yarder. Hey, this thing's not over yet. We're going to take a commercial break. We better meet back here in a couple minutes. You can feel it in the air. The Cyclones have tried to shift the momentum here. Maybe they've done it. It's 31-14. They just scored a touchdown and then stopped Iowa's powerful offense for the first time today. It was 28-7 at the half. Now it's 31-14. Under four minutes to go in the third quarter, and the crowd is back in it. First and 10. Ball in the 27 after a three-yard punt. Utter spins, gives the ball low to Branch. Picks up a couple yards. Let's go over to the Iowa State sideline and Rod Bothold. Rod, I imagine the energy is much higher now. Absolutely, Keith. That defensive stop combined with that punt that went about straight up in the air has put a charge into the fans right down to the sideline. You get the feeling that everyone knows Iowa State is running out of chances. This possession is crucial. Thank you, Rod. It probably is. It's second and eight. And like we said in the pregame show, we thought the wind would be a big factor. It has been. It's, it's wreaked havoc on the punters. 
Utter keeps, finds some room, slices down to about the 17-yard line. Bobby Diaco with the stop for the Hawkeyes and Utter's close to a first down. I think what you see here is Utter freelancing. You've got the fullback dive. He sees the ends uh, are plugged, and so he takes it right up the middle. That was not a planned play. He freelanced that and made it into some big yards. Third and two. Branch up the middle. He's got the first down, down to the 15-yard line. Jim Walden sensing that maybe they can get back in this thing. I think what you're starting to see is the Iowa State offensive line starting to uh, actually do some aggressive blocking, making some holes, letting the running backs do their thing, run with the ball. Barat told us on the Cyclone sideline earlier in the first half that Walden was telling people, come on, we've got to be more aggressive. And Bob Utter wants to talk it over with Jim Walden. Well, Walden had said earlier, uh, Rod Bothold had overheard him say, that uh, we've got to be more aggressive, we've got to be more reckless, we've got to have more fun out there, and I think they're, they're doing it now, aren't they? You can see that they're approaching the game differently in this half. Well, I, I think for sure, Keith, from a defensive standpoint, they did. That last series, they showed some fire, they were aggressive on the tackles, they were swarming the way a defensive team needs to to stop a drive, and, and it was evident. They were able to stop them, got a good turnover with the punt, and uh, they're they're in business. They they could make this a game if they could score right here. And I think that's part of why they're taking the timeout, uh, making sure they've got what they want to do. They've got two minutes left before the wind changes on them. They're looking forward to trying to get something going right now. Nobody has left Cyclone Stadium, a sold-out crowd of nearly 55,000 people. Boy, this is just football at its best. It, it, if you can't get caught up in this, you probably aren't a fan of college football because this is just a lot of fun. And if you Hayden Fry, you know, there are a lot of questions about Hayden Fry's Hawkeye team, but I think they've answered a lot of them today. This is a good football team. They've got the good defense. We knew about that, but I don't see anything wrong with that Hawkeye offense. At least we haven't seen it. Well, the, w the way they're playing today, and, it, and it's difficult. It's only the second game of the season. Tulsa may have been a fluke, but I'm saying, Big Ten, you better watch out. They're better than people think they might be. Michigan was losing to Notre Dame last week. Heard maybe they're not as good as some people might think. First and ten. Oh, fumble. It Ball's on the ground, the Hawkeyes recover. Chris Webb smothers it after Bob Utter is hammered at the 20-yard line. Big play for the Hawkeyes. When you need a big play, you look to your defense. Utter drops back, he's looking, and he is wrapped up. Perfect tackle. You grab the quarterback's arms and you just kind of rake them. The ball gets free. Iowa has the ball. And the tempo of the game has changed again, Keith. The momentum shifted right back. That was Morier Crane right there. He's the man who smothered the ball. It was Webb who crunched Utter. Utter never had a chance on that. Uh, it would be hard for anybody to hang on to the football when they're hit that hard. Nice play by Webb and Crane. Let's see how much this affects the... Cyclone defense, Terry on the sweep. Picks up about seven. Kevin Fulton on the stop. Let's go down to John Campbell and John, big play for the Hawks. It was by Ryan Terry and here's his dad, Ray Terry, he drove over from Steubenville, Ohio. How do you like the play of your son so far today? So far he's doing a great job and so is Cedric Shaw and the rest of the ball club. They've moved the ball real well, didn't they? They've been running real well today. You're sitting 31-14. Uh, Do you feel easy yet, Ray? I don't feel easy until it's over with. Over with. When you watch a ball game, are you just watching Ryan, or can you watch the whole game? I try to watch the whole football game, you know, who's blocking. Well, we've got a score update for you that we know you want to hear. Notre Dame, 27. Michigan, 24. 30 seconds to play. Sounds like a heck of a ball game going on there. We've got a good one here, too. Fourth down four, and for the first time today, well, second time, we had that punt that almost went backwards, and this time, 
Uh, number 20, Brian Hurley, will give it a shot. Smart move. Smart move. Smart move by the Hawkeyes. Yep. Well, I can hear several fans yelling and to the referee. Well, there was, they, they're saying that there was a two-second difference right. between the clock and... Exactly. At three seconds, the clock will start on the snap. That was a big break for the Cyclones. Uh, and these uh, these officials just doing a heck of a job today. They've really about ten minutes left, and and that's okay. You see him drop back, utters back. He's looking for a receiver. They're covered. Iowa's doing a great job. He starts to scramble, and uh, it looked like he was going to bring his arm back, and he was going to try to throw the ball to make it an incomplete pass. They ruled it a fumble. Iowa's ball. Well, very, very disappointed, Bob Utter. Uh, there was nothing he could do there. The ball was pulled out of his hands, and nobody can question the guts of junior quarterback Bob Utter. Burmeister back in for the Hawkeyes. The Cyclones will try to strip him. Lillibridge and Sanders call a quick timeout. Well, let's all take a collective breath. <laughs> yeah, really, Keith. <laughs> Ball game. Today, Ryan Terry, and we even had an interview with his father. Third down eight. Some fans starting to file out, trying to get a jump on the traffic. Third and eight. 30 seconds to go. Burmeister back to pass. He back to hand off to King. King takes it down to about the 46-yard line. Well, that's going to about do it. And, and, and Arlen, do you feel like we just went through an emotional roller coaster there where we thought we're going to have a game that's going down to the last play? Well, we've had it all. We thought, we, it, we thought at the beginning it might be a blowout. Iowa State brought it close. We had some last-minute dramatics. We've had virtually everything here, Keith. And it was an exciting game. From a, I think from a fan's perspective, you couldn't have wanted anything better. Well, the final score is Hawkeyes 31, Cyclones 28. Aiden Fry and Jim Walden have a lot to talk about. This was one heck of a football game. We'll be back.